What time is it? It's tea sauce time. You guys have been asking for it for a long time, over a year, and we finally have a T sauce 1911 that we are going to review. Forged 1911, it says right here, forged frame and slide. It also is a 70 series. Thanks goes out to T sauce and AIM Surplus for helping us get this T and E gun. And guys, we are going to test it and shoot the hell out of it next. And we're going to continue to test it over a length of, I don't know, six months, a year, whatever. It depends on how interested you guys are in it on giving you updates or whatnot. But uh, right now we have a TLR1 light on here. Just to give you an idea what it looks like with a light on, you obviously you don't have to have it on there. Stainless Stainless steel frame and slide, stainless steel barrel. So get the box out of the way. Not a bad little box, a little cleaning gear right here. You've got your instructions back here behind the phone. Pistol comes with two mags, so that's nice to see. Right. And this is a rail gun, of course, so yeah. it has the rail to be able to attach a lighter laser, which is really cool considering the price point. So the price point this thing comes in at, you guys, is less than $600, and that's from AIM Surplus's website. So yeah. be sure to go to AIM Surplus's website and pick one of these up if you're interested. He has been really good to us in helping us try to get some teeny guns. So of all the places out there that we throw shout-outs to, AIM Surplus is one of our number one Absolutely. guys out there. Thank yep. you so much. Uh, again, two magazines. Hey, Kimber, somebody's giving out two magazines with their pistols. <laughs> Kimber, follow suit, please. We would like you to send out two magazines to your customers. All right, let's talk about what we're going to be shooting through the T-Sauce here. We have Remington ammo up here. We've got 230 grain high terminal performance. Another hollow point bonded ammo, the Golden Saber, 185 grain. 45 ACP, so a little bit smaller, traveling a little bit faster. And then over here is Remington 45 automatic jacketed hollow point. This is their baseline hollow point, uh, 230 grain ammo. So what we've been doing lately is shooting all three different hollow points through every 1911 that we test along with their regular Remington ammo, just to give you guys an idea of will it run on hollow points? It always comes up. People always wonder that. Like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe some of them didn't. I'm not seeing that in the modern 1911s. Yeah. But maybe we will. Maybe we'll come across one that isn't quite, you know, great. Magazines. Wilson Combat Magazines right here. And who else do we have? Never Unarmed Magazines right here. So a couple of different magazines along with whatever it comes with. Which is, what does it say? 45 ACP. Just standard mag. Yep. Nothing this is on standard it. standard mag. Eight rounders. Yep. It's good to get an eight rounder because, guys, eight plus one in the pipe because you're going to carry it, you know, cocked and locked, right? So you've got nine rounds of 45. How about it? You're going to have some mim and cast parts on this. You're going to have the front serrations done in the front right here. As far as um, how well it is timed, with your trigger and your grip safety. Pressure here on the trigger. Yeah. Okay. Halfway. Another Wilson ETM. I put lock grips on it, so those are the lock ops texture. I think maybe blood red blacks, and I put a Wilson Combat uh, bulletproof mag release on it. Other than that, the gun is completely stock, hadn't changed any of the internals or anything like that. The trigger on it is really nice, but I will say that one thing I noticed that I do not like about the Made in Turkey 1911s is the weird sensation that you get in the web of the hand when you pull the trigger. It all has to do with the freaking grip safety back there. It just, it has a weird sensation when you pull the trigger. You can kind of feel a little bit of pushback right yeah, back like here. like a spring pop. At the exact time that the trigger is pulled on it. So yeah. it may go away. It may be something that just happens when the pistols are brand new. So you guys that own them, because I know there's a good 20, 25, 30 of you that follow us every time on every video that own TSOS uh, 1911s, let us know. Have you felt that before? So when you grab the pistol and you grip the pistol properly and you pull the trigger, you can feel just a little pushback right hand, here. Yeah, it's just strange. There's nothing else like it. It's only, from my experience, the lesser expensive 1911s. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember feeling that on anything except for this. And like I said, very minute. You can hardly feel it. It's yeah. not a big deal. Nothing to worry about to tell you to buy it or not to buy it. If you like the gun, if the pistol functions flawlessly, if it is reliable, that is the big thing on a 1911 for me. And any gun I recommend to you guys. 
it has to run almost perfect. Is it always going to be perfect 100%? No, you're going to run into something here and there once every 500 rounds, once every 1,000 rounds, a little bit of a malfunction of some sort. But it has to be something like that. Let's get into those bigger numbers where the pistol is just really, really reliable as you're learning and mastering the way the pistol works, okay? Bottom line, get good magazines for the pistol. If you're going to buy one of these, get Wilson Combats, Trip Research. The Neverland Arms have been pretty good. They are a less expensive 1911 magazine, but they've been working out really well overall. Yeah. But for self-defense, definitely Wilson or Trip or something like that. Business in, pretty nicely done. Standard GI profile. The yep. Standard GI guide rod. How is the uh, ambi safety on this? Does the uh, spring... It really isn't that bad. Could you sweep it off accidentally? You know, maybe. I mean, because you do have to... But not really, man. I think it's okay. If you're going to make this a serious pistol, though, I'd probably change out that spring yeah, to make a it Wilson a... Combat spring. Just so it's a little bit tighter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's activation and deactivation. Yeah, if you wanted to tighten it up, I could see that. But really and truly, it wouldn't be on the top of my list of things to do if I wanted to keep it. It would be, I have to change this. I have to fix this or whatever. Unless something changes as we shoot it. But you're right. To make it, if you're going to carry it to protect your life and stuff, you probably want it to be a little bit more effort to sweep it on and off, no matter how good it does sound, because it does sound pretty good. Yeah. Novak cell sights. You have front cock insurations, which is something that uh, I think pretty much all the T-Sauces have, right? I think so. And they're pretty nice, too. They actually are. And they're kind of grippy. They're more grippy than uh, the standard manufacturer, whichever one we saw earlier. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, they're good. How does the uh, slide to frame feel, and how is there any movement in the barrel at all? It looks pretty good. Fit back here, if you guys can see that. I mean, that's really wonderful. And this is pretty good, too. I mean, I've seen a hell of a lot worse on cheaper 1911s. Just, Just a, a tiny, bit. Okay. tiny bit of Again, movement. Again, for the price you're paying, you guys, that's tiny. totally acceptable. Yeah, a tiny bit of movement. This gun also has an HRT cut slide stop. Did you see that? Oh, that's my really Lord. surprising to see. All right, guys, let's talk about the trigger here. So we have a little bit of movement up and down, just a little. And then do we have anything that goes to the side? Yeah. Just a little bit of movement to the side. So it's fit in there like a 1911 that you would expect to be, you know, around six, $700. I would expect a little bit of movement both ways, and it does have a little bit of movement both ways. As far as the poundage, or let's see what happens here when we've got it firmed up. See if it's got any creep or crawl to it. It does not. It breaks. And I'm going to say it breaks right at about five pounds. Very clean. Yeah, it's a very clean break. Let's try to reset here. Reset. Pushes pretty good. A little bit further than uh, maybe some of your customs. Um, but this is not a custom, so production, I'd say it's acceptable. See how it kind of pushes out at a little bit of an angle, too? That's that movement side to side that you have. Like it's shoot, shooting a little bit to one side or the other instead of straight out. But I don't really think that's anything to be concerned about. I think it's very minor. So when you're critiquing something this much on a pistol of this uh, uh, price range, you know, you've got to keep that in mind. Hey, if you want the absolute best and you don't want any movement in your trigger and you want rock solid reset and fast reset and all that kind of stuff, you got to pay up a little bit for that. So what you're getting right here uh, appears to be a great bang for the buck. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for an entry level price 1911. I mean, what your other options as far as 1911s out there in this price range really that I can think of that I would be interested in buying would only be the Springfield mill spec. Yeah. Not interested in any of the Ruger 1911s because they have cast frames. I'm definitely not interested in any of the Rock Island stuff because I haven't had the best experience in shooting the two. They weren't reliable for us. And I know some of you guys swear by your Rock Islands. So just to talk about them real quick, ours, our two examples were not reliable 1911s. And yeah. again, so we didn't keep them for very long. They looked pretty nice. When they were working, they seemed to work okay. But we don't traditionally keep anything that's not reliable to us so they went and then let's look here yeah we got a little bit of uh work done here yeah on the bevel i'm not mm -hmm. bad it's also a little bit of an undercut right here as you can see to the trigger guard and look at that the way that that's all fit in, in in there yeah the mainspring housing has fit really well overall not bad again for a inexpensive 1911 guys i'm not gonna this, call it cheap right but it is just a really good price point and as far as the quality it appears to be decent yep. for the money Yep, the extractor seems to be very well fit in there too. It says duty over here with the symbol of a hawk. That's what I think it is right there. 
So that's kind of cool. It fits very nicely in hand. The lock grips, just like always, helps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it fits really nice in the hand. You're right. I'd like that to be a little bit tougher to slick on and slick off. All right. Let's go shoot it. Let's go shoot the thing. Yeah, see how it does. All right, guys, the stainless steel railed 45 from TSOS, along with a never unarmed magazine to start us off. We'll get the uh, factory mag out. Dang, guys. I bet that trigger's better than the standard ready factory. There's a Wilson Combat Magazine. I know that, uh, you know, we're just starting to shoot it here, but uh, pistols talk to you. They either tell you, hey, yeah, you like this one, or hey, this one's gonna take some work to like. I will say this, in shooting it, I'm actually not feeling any of I'm right not now. either. Any of the springiness from the grip. And so far, first magazine down, this thing is pretty sweet. The uh, sights really jump out at me. The feeling of the recoil is very smooth to me. The reset on the trigger is very nice. I mean, I'm just tearing it up, dude. That's perfect shooting. Two magazines right off the bat. Last magazine for me, this is the Wilson Combat with the regular jacketed hollow point from Remington. All right, guys, the TSOS SSR 45 using a never an arm eight round mag and some Remington high terminal performance ammunition. See how this thing runs. That was very smooth and feeding that hollow point. Smooth. Last mag for me. Another ETM from Wilson Combat. Try offhand. Brass casings too. 100 percent though, dude. Very impressive, man. I gotta eat crow on that. The Seasauce 1911 shoot pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you can't really feel that in your hand when you're shooting it live, guys. So we thought that would be an issue. It is not an issue at all. Very impressive. Yeah, 100 percent reliable, man. Running like a top. Yeah. Alright, guys, my last Wilson Combat magazine right here. In the SSR 45 from T Sauce. Let's just see how it feels when you're going from target to target. So that's it for this T-Sauce. It ran 100%. No issues, no problems. That is wonderful to see. It is hot now after putting that many rounds through it that quickly. But the pistol overall was fantastic. No problems with feeling anything through the grip safety, so disregard that if Young Beretta puts that into the video itself about us talking about the grip safety. There was no issues with that at all. The whole thing ran great. No problems. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking at something like this or the 20 of you that already have these TSOS uh, 1911s and we're talking about how good they are on our videos, you're right. It's a great running 1911, especially if you're looking for a 1911 in that $600 area. And again, guys, if you're interested in this 1911 or anything else from TSOS, go to AIM Surplus's website and shop through them because they supported us and they made this video happen. So if you enjoyed this video, it's thanks to AIM Surplus and TSOS. Yeah, you got to give them credit because we did not own it yeah. and they helped us track them down and send them out to us us as T&E guns. So I really appreciate that. Thanks very much for doing that for us. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Beretta 9mm USA, for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future. And as always, guys, remember your Second Amendment is worth protecting. We'll see you on the next video.